to the 60-minute expose last week of the um, congressman being privy to stocks and bonds that are non-public. I appointed to learn about that. Yeah, I, again, being there 10 months, I had no idea about that. I used to regulate securities, and I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the law, the insider trading rule. I had no idea Congress was exempted from it. And I've never been in any type of meeting like that. I'm, I'm rank and file where I've been privy to such information. So, you know, I am for certainly Congress as representatives of the people to be treated like every other person. I think that goes without saying. I think this can be uh, handled by removing the exemption. Uh, I would ask that we understand that if I can't be in some of those meetings, if I can't get, I can't represent you as well. I shouldn't profit. No one should profit on after the fact, but please, let's not do something that keeps Congress from getting the information because we are a reflection of you. And if it's if it start if there's rules that start to be put up where Congress doesn't get the information from the from the uh, my name's Gordon Hicks, and I've lived around here about 32 years. And first of all, I'm sorry about your insurance problem. You should have stayed on the level with us. But second of all, everybody gets in the office and they try to think of new ways to do things. Well, I can remember a time a few years ago when everything was going real well. Why don't the people that get in office now think about how they did there's things? A lot, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, we, like I said, we ended up out of World War II as creditor to the world. Now, our debt-to-GDP ratio was very high, but we, again, because it was a one-time event, knew we could uh, account for it and pay it down. Um, and, and I think our success was relative to what was happening around the rest of the world and how they fared after the war. Uh, but we are in a different time now, and I'm not so sure that it has to do with going back to ways of the mid-20th century, or it has to do with ways to stay competitive in the 21st century. I mean, we Back after the war, we were competing with Fort Wayne and Evansville and maybe some faraway place in Ohio. And now we're comp create, uh, competing with people and ideas in, in places that we can barely pronounce. And <clears throat> I think that's how we have to look at this. And America has always been successful, not because of any certain period of time, but because of the idea that if people were able to keep their property and people able, were able to keep their innovative ability, it wasn't taxed or removed from them, then we can stay on the cutting edge and we can be competitive with anyone else in the world and win. So the danger that I see is that that uniquely American attribute is being taxed and confiscated away. And it's not just with us in the here and now. 
the economic liberty and, in fact, the liberty of people who don't exist yet who are going to be Americans. Yeah, Congressman, um, switch gears a little bit. Uh, I believe it was uh, House Bill 822 that you just voted on. Um, I think it versus 21 or something. I'm trying to remember. Conceal, the concealed carry. Yeah, the concealed carry, but I had the commerce law on it, too, I believe, or something right. like that. And I believe you voted for that. Um, can you explain yourself why you would have voted for that? Because I think it was against gun owners more than it was for them. So. Well, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm an NRA lifetime member. Yeah, I know. And I, when I'm in situations like that, I call ah. and check, and they were very much for it. And I'm also I'm a concealed um, weapons uh, permit carrier, and I like the idea that uh, I wouldn't have to be entrapped by another state's law by using right. a gun in their state. So that's in Marion I'm County, in, you? which you're familiar with. If you are eligible for food stamps, that means that you receive a free cell phone and 250 minutes of free time. Okay. Number two, if you are a native of Burmese. Uh, I believe it's Greenwood, south of Indianapolis. They build a big housing district down there. And the Burmese people, if they have a piece of paper that the government gave them, they show up at the international airport and they are picked up and taken to live there and they get free health care at Wishard Hospital. Those are the kinds of things that gets under our skin because those people are not entitled to that. If you're, if you're eligible for free food, for food stamps, why would you get a cell phone? Those are the kind of things that I would like to see you and your, co your, your brothers and conservatives put an end to that stuff. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we pay for all that. Yep, you know, sure. and, and, and I know that's on the state level, but if it's on the state level, it's got to be a lot worse on the national level. So. Uh, any other thoughts on that before I respond to it all? Did he, did he capture the feeling of the group? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, not just with Burmese people, but with no, no, other no. Yeah, uh, yeah. Understood. any. Yeah. But that happens in Marion County. That's why I brought it up. I am, close, I am not. Home. Okay. I am not um, familiar with the Burmese fact pattern exactly. So let me answer the Burmese question. The Burmese question in terms of what I think it's the program that's covering it. And that is Medicaid, health care for the poor. The idea there, and it's in the Ryan budget, is that we take the money that you're giving for Medicaid and that we're borrowing on behalf of our kids and grandchildren for Medicaid, and we get the federal government out of it. We get every federal bureaucrat out of the way. We let it stay here closer to the property owner. So keep it at the state level. You're the property owner of those dollars, those that you paid for and borrow, but it shouldn't go to Washington, D.C. in the